In this episode, I give a demonstration of incorrectly set ignition timing, wrestle with a fuel pump, discover a coolant leak, make one part of the car clean, and let the intake speak. Welcome to another episode of Project Car Haven. I'm Andy, and today I'm gonna to finish fitting the carburetor, fit a new fuel pump, and drive this out of here. I hope. Okay, so the barb for the fuel inlet on the carb has shown up, so I can fit this, and then I can get the carb fitted to the manifold. So here we go, fuel inlet here, this guy into here. Tighten that up, carb on the car. All right. So because the gasket's not supported in any meaningful way in here, I'm gonna place this in and then trim out the excess through the middle. So if it does fail, it won't fall into the inlet, go into a cylinder, turn into ash, get spat out the exhaust. to get to it all. Well, that one's gonna be fun to get the nut on. This choke cable is too short to do the job. I need to buy a new one, trim it to length. Once that's in the bracket and set up here, I can tighten this up so that then the choke will operate as it should. So old car things, happy little accident. Not really happy at all. So obviously there's a coolant leak. For some reason it's coming out at the sill. I assume it's the heater core. I dive in to have a look and sure enough, the heater tap is leaking. So I guess now I've got to drain out all the coolant and get the tap out, see if I can find a replacement. Okay, so I managed to get that heater tap out and here it is, it was leaking from here. But once I got it out, I found out what the issue probably was. That is destroyed. Yep, as you can see, that there is totally disintegrated. Junk. No good. Now, the original is built at a 90 degree angle for the feed. It's a weird bracketry rod. I found a replacement, which is universal, but it's straight through. The solution for this is this bracket here will clamp onto the cable, which then actuates this. There's also a bracket on that cable which will hold it in place so everything should stay solid and this will be able to open and close with the control. Just a matter of figuring out which way that switch moves as to whether the cable being down or up means hot or cold and then make sure this is orientated the correct way so that hot equals open. This is going to be quite fiddly so I'm not going to film this part but you can see the cable here to change the temp and there's a little bracket just here i need to take that off so i can then mount the other tap to this cable bolt this back in hold it all together and then i need to do some modification to the hoses so it now fits a straight through fitting rather than a 90 degree so i've clamped the new heater tap onto the cable it's attached here if i move the slider that moves really easy on an old car like this, I've never had the heater switch move that easily. Brand new tap makes all the difference. Now I've got to get that mounted back in, adjust the hoses so they fit the new orientation and screw it all together. So it was a very tight fit, but that uh, heater valve is now in place. 
and works. Now it's just a matter of filling the radiator and making sure that it doesn't leak anymore. All right, so no more messing about. I'm gonna whip this fuel pump out and switch it over. I'm not gonna try and run with it. I think we're gonna be better off with a ratchet a bit tight next to the oil filter so I'm just going to use ratchet and socket try and line it up and get this guy out going by feel alone it's always fun that bolt is very clean. Separate please. Just give it a little tap, see if it wants to come free. There we go. Now we can compare this to the new one quick little comparison between the fuel pumps so they're obviously bars for a different orientation slightly shouldn't make too much of a difference the original pumps arm sits out further than the replacement pump but this did have a spacer on here so by the time we put this one on without a spacer it should be sitting in about the right spot I guess we'll find out so I've cleaned up the surface of the block with some sandpaper, ready for the new gasket and pump. Fitted the bolts in the gasket here, ready to go. Let's try and slide it in and see if it works. Shorter bolts. Because there's no spacer now, I need shorter bolts. Hopefully it'll kick over, just testing to see if this pump's gonna flow fuel. pump is working great. All right, all the fuel lines are rerouted. Now it's time to see whether this car will run on this new carb with new fuel pump. Yes. Look, I knew it was gonna take a little while for it to fill the fuel bowl. It's done that. The throttle linkage is in with the different bracket. Let's see if that works. Just wanted to see if we're leaking fuel, and of course we are. So I've got to sort that out and then check timing. <sighs> that new fuel pump that I put in is already dead. Car ran for a little while and then stopped. It seemed like it wasn't getting any fuel. I pulled the hose off, and checked, there's no flow. So then I pulled the pump off. I pressed the lever with my hand and there was no resistance. It's a sealed unit and is kaput. So it's now living in the bin. My other options are to refit the original pump. But to do that, I need to get another spacer, which sits the fuel pump out from the block. It's about that big, because when I took the original pump off, that one fell apart, because it's, you know, old. 
the other option is to run with the electric fuel pump but set it up so it's at the back of the car and can push the fuel up as it's designed to do. The other issue with that is the fuel pump that's in here is a GE239 GOS pump which is rated to run from about 4 to 6 psi. Weber carbs like to run at about 4 psi so it's a bit too much pressure. There's another model, looks exactly the same, runs at lower pressure and it's a GE242 so I'll have to order one of those uh, while I decide what to do. I'll need to blank off where the original fuel pump sits so it doesn't spew oil everywhere and just jerry-rig this pump and run it intermittently to keep the bowl full so I can check the timing, set that right and then hopefully have enough time to make it drive out of here like I wanted. Let's go. So I've made a blanking plate to cover where the original fuel pump goes. That could become permanent if I decide to go with the electric fuel pump route, but for now, I'm just gonna use it to temporarily block that hole. So there we are. The plate is temporarily in place with no gasket and no sealer, so it may weep, but at least it won't spew out any oil. Okay, so I've grounded the pump and the positive wire is hooked up to my remote starter. So when I press on this, it runs the pump. This will work for my temporary fuel feed solution. Well, with that set up, I'm going to get the car running and I'm going to set the timing. I'm not going to film that because the frame rate of a camera versus the timing light flashing will make for something very hard to watch and people with epilepsy may end up having an episode. Bolt collection saves the day again. Base plate secure. These just clip on, I hope. I don't know why that has to be shiny, but it does. I'm gonna get this steering column shroud put on. Don't wanna do these up too tight and crack the plastic. Just enough to snugly hold it in place. See? It just makes the car look that bit more complete. That needs cleaning though. Oh, I think I'm ready to try and drive it out of here. It's a quick check of the radiator, make sure it's gonna burp out all the air in the system. First attempt to drive in about a decade or more under its own power. Let's see what happens. Okay, went into gear all right. Oh. It's driving under its own power. There we go, got no rear view mirrors, so that's handy. I'm gonna to have to reverse that. Get reverse gear. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Get around this corner, come on. No brakes, none. moves under its own power. I'm very happy. Tack 
Jacko works, that's good. Well, I'm going to put it to bed under this cover for now. I think that's enough for this episode. In the next one, I might do the fuel system. Might clean it. I don't know. I've got to have a think about it. See you in the next one.